it's Kelly from Lockbriar Knits coming to you from a sunny Nova Scotia, Canada where I live uh, close to the ocean with my husband and our golden retriever Cedar who is not making an appearance so far today. Um, he's sacked out upstairs on my bed so you know we may not see him. <laughs> anyway uh, this is my podcast uh, about knitting and hand dyeing and all kinds of yarny goodness. Uh, if you're a new viewer, thanks so much for checking the podcast out. If you're a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you want to know when the next episode or any of the blogs that I do are out, just hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up if you like the episode. It helps get the uh, word out. Um, first off, where can you find me other than here? I am most active on Instagram and uh, you can find me there at Kelly L. Boyce and everywhere else it's pretty much you can find me Lockbriar or Lockbriar Knits. So Facebook and Etsy shop and the um, Ravelry group for this podcast. I think down in the doobly-doo there it's got all of the uh, where I'm at. So um this week has been, or actually two weeks since I podcasted last, I have actually been knitting up a storm, and yet I have no finished objects. So things went awry, I had a meltdown over a sock, and yeah, but I, I did get stuff done. So maybe what I'll do, rather, I usually start off with acquisitions, but I think what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with the uh, whip it good section because I whipped things and I didn't finish anything <laughs> because I ran into issues left, right, and center on a lot of things. Well, two things. Yeah, two things which is potentially five things because one of the things was a sock and if I can't figure that out I can't move on with the other three pairs of socks that have the needles so I have to figure it out anyway let's get into it so what am I drinking today you know what I felt like some minty freshness today so I'm drinking Bigelow peppermint tea which is really good and of course it's in my uh, shop on the corner mug which I love I love um, but it's also really hot so I'm just gonna set that over there and hopefully I don't spill it in my urn because that would be bad so we're gonna start off first with the sock from hell I had actually planned on having this pair of socks as a faux and I do have, these are my Canada Day socks. So this is the first one. And it's finished and it's fantastic. It turned out great. And then, for some reason, when I went to do sock number two, everything was going along fine. And then I got to the heel. So I did the heel flap, everything went fine. Did the, what do they call it? The eye of partridge stitch, I think. Slip knit, slip knit, slip knit. Yeah, did that. And then I started shaping the heel. And that went fine. And then when I picked up the stitches like along the side to start shaping for the gusset, I thought, well, First, when I started doing the heel, the pattern was, I think it was like knit three, and then you started the slip one, slip two, and I thought, that's weird. I don't remember doing that on the other one, but I thought, well, maybe I just forgot. No, God forbid I go downstairs and actually check the set, the first sock I did to see. Um, but I thought, whatever, it's like, you know, it's a heel. How different could it be? It'll end up the same eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So as I started, you can see I had to rip stuff out. So um, when I when I started picking up the stitches for the to start shaping the gusset, I realized I'm looking at it going. It feels like the needles are going to be in the wrong direction. And by wrong direction, if you're doing magic loop, as most of you probably know if you're doing any type of magic loop, is that your working yarn has to be in the back. So, oops. So that's all well and good. Um, except that when I started doing it, I realized that that's not what's going to happen. My working yarn is going to end up in the front if I follow this pattern the way I'm understanding it. So I thought, okay, I must have, I must have accidentally turned something around between the heel flap and the shaping of the heel. So I went back and I kind of, I took out the shaping of the heel because I thought the heel flap, I thought, okay, I went over what I did and I ended where I should have. But then when I re-knit the shaping of the heel, I ended up in the exact same place following the pattern as I thought it said. And I thought, okay, what am I have to be doing something wrong because if I do it this way, I'm going to end up with the working yarn in front, and that can't be right. So I read the pattern about five more times, and I'm like, okay, I did this, and then this, and then this. So this is the pattern I'm using, and if any of you are using it, it's a free pattern, so I can share it with you. It's, um, it's the Unapologetic Knitter, and it's my favorite vanilla socks. And seriously, that's all it is. It's just a vanilla sock. But, I'm going to stick my glasses on for this one. When I do the heel flap, it's basically, it's a four row repeat. So I start with the wrong side, right side, wrong side, right side. And I do that six more times. So I do it seven in total. And I end with Right, wrong side, right side, wrong side, right side, and with the right side. And then for turning the heel, you start with the wrong side facing you, which makes sense because you just had the right side facing you. So when you go to do the next one, you would turn the work and have the wrong side facing you. And then again, it's another four row repeat. So it's wrong side, right side, wrong side, right side. And you do that four more times until you have 16 stitches on the needle, on the back needle, which I did. And then it tells you to start, it says, using the back needle, pick up and knit 14 stitches, in my case, along the heel flap edge. So I did that. And then I follow the things and it says, okay, so based on where what they're telling me, I ended up in the right place. And then for, for needle one. And then I did the same thing for needle two and I ended up in the place that they're telling me I should have ended up in. But I'm looking at the, at the sock and again, when I do that, the, the working yarn is on the wrong side. It's on the front needle. And I'm sitting there thinking, there's got to be some way that I can get it on the back needle. But for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to do that. So I thought maybe, because they're not referring to, to the needles as front and back anymore, they're calling them needle one, needle two, that it's okay. And I just have to start knitting even if the working yarn is on the front needle. Um, so I did that, but the problem with that is, is that when you knit with the stuff in the front needle, then of course this comes out looking like a garter stitch, not a stocking knit stitch. So I thought clearly that's wrong. Uh, so I couldn't figure it out. 
And I don't know if I'm just being obtuse about it. Is there, like, am I reading something wrong? So, I don't know. I've gone over this, like, a hundred times by now. I literally woke up through the night trying to figure it out three times. I did not sleep. And that's really stupid. So, anyway, this is, let's see if, you, if I can get that to focus. So this is the pattern that I'm using. It's called my favorite vanilla sock. And I'm sure that the fault is at my end because I'm pretty sure if there was an issue with this, she would have figured that out long before now. And you know, she would have, she would have fixed it. Um, so I'm like about 99.9% .9 sure that the error is in my reading of the pattern, but I can't figure out where I'm reading it wrong. So I have no idea. I literally have no idea. So what I ended up doing, as you can see, because I no longer have a heel, um, I put in a lifeline and then I just ripped it out. And what I'm going to do is go back. I have, I have two other patterns. One is just if you were doing DPN, so I don't know if that's going to be any help to me. And the other one is a vanilla sock, um, top down magic loop pattern. So I'm going to kind of look at the two of those like the one that I what that I did use and then that one and see if I can figure out what I'm reading wrong because clearly I'm doing something wrong and then the other thing I noticed too was I went back and thought I'm just going to look at the heel of these ones because the unapologetic knitter one uh, told me to knit three so that you've got like a garter edge along the like the edge of the sock here and that's where you pick up your stitches and I thought I know I didn't do that the last time so I went back and looked and sure enough no it's it's just like slip one and then go to town um, so clearly this is not the pattern I used for this and then I checked my other sock that I had already completed one of which was the lavender field sock and it's got an identical heel to this so somewhere I was looking at a different pattern, but I don't know what pattern I was looking at because the other one I just downloaded yesterday trying to figure this out. So like it was, I'm, I'm sitting there being defeated by a vanilla sock. Seriously, I need to take apparently remedial knitting skills because honestly, it's like it's a vanilla sock. Ugh. <laughs> Why can I not figure it out? Oh, I will figure it out. It may kill me because here was the thing. I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to knit all of my socks down to here, all the ones that I have in the needles, and then I'm going to do the heel flap on all of them, and then I'm going to do the turning of the heel on all of them, so I'm just going to go boom, 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 like a little factory line, right? <sighs> so that I could get them all to the point where all I had left to do was to knit the gusset on all of them, and then I could just pick them up, and it could be like car knitting or just TV knitting or whatever. Um, but I can't do the heel flap and the shaping of the heel and the picking up the stitches um, to get to like the gusset where you're doing the shaping there. I can't do that when I have distractions because I miscount and then I forget where I am in the pattern. <laughs> and I don't know. So I can do straight knitting, straight stocking net or garter stitching. But if I have to do any kind of shaping or anything like that. So that's going to be my project um, for today between 
editing this and I don't know see and here's the here's the worst part of it is I can't even drown my sorrows in wine because <laughs> it makes me sound like an alcoholic doesn't it I decided I well I didn't decide I mean the fact was over the past few weeks I have been eating way too much sugar because number one it's summer and I love coming home on a sunny day after work and just sitting on the back deck with a glass of wine. One glass of wine, that's it. That's it. But I also really like Hagen Dawes ice cream bars. And here's the thing I clearly inherited the glutton gene for sweets from my father. But the only sweets that I really like are ice cream cold chocolate, milk chocolate, not even the semi-healthy dark chocolate, and wine, which, that's, well, that's a sweet. It's got a lot of sugar in it. So that's been my diet lately for the last six weeks. And we're going to PEI to the beach for a week, in a week. And unless I want to feel like an inflatable device, I thought maybe I should just cut out the sugar for the next couple of weeks. So I did that forgetting that this is a long weekend for us because it's our natal day weekend <laughs> and it's sunny. So I've been sitting on the deck drinking lemon water, which I've got to tell you, not the same. I like my white wine. So anyway, I had no wine to drown my sorrows. <laughs> Which is probably a good thing in the long run because it was a very sorrowful period in the day when I could not get that stupid sock to work. You know, and the thing was, I was going along all happy with the magic loop and everything was working fine, and I did stop and think, you know, you could maybe put this on the DPNs and then go from there and you wouldn't have to rip back. But I was like, you know what? No, I am not going to be defeated by this. I am going to figure out what the problem was and I'm going to conquer it. I will not be defeated by a pair of socks. So that being said, I'll show you what I got done in the other ones. This is in my, oh, my Canada Day bag. I have my Canada Day socks in here, but then I put them in my little carrying a case from the loop because that fits really well in my bag, um, my backpack for work because I carry my computer and my backpack and my gym clothes and all that stuff. So this one is my Forest and Sky socks, which I've shown you before. So I am all ready to do the heel flap. So here it is. This uh, this colorway is in my shop. Uh, it's called Forest and Sky. So I did this on my Knitter's Pride um, size zero. Uh, the or not DPNs, Cirques, uh, the forty inch Cirques. So that is the first sock for this one. Uh, and you know, once I figure out the pattern. I'm hoping to get these done. I have a feeling that these are all going to be coming on vacation with me because I don't know if I'll have time. Well, if I can figure the thing out today, then I should be able to get at least maybe one or two of them done before we leave for vacation. But then I'll probably take one or two new ones to cast on. Um, so that's the Forest and Sky socks. This one, this is holding my Piper sock, which, and this is not going to show up as green on the camera as it actually is. So this one, I did the sock um, the way that the pattern called for. So I don't know if you can see here. This has got the garter stitch. So I don't know. 
if I should leave. I, I'll probably just leave that. I don't know. I forgot that I actually done the sock on this one or the heel. Uh, this is from Fiber for the People and that's her hyper colorway shirt. Hyper color shirt. <laughs> colorway sorry um but it's it's the green is really blowing out here it's like super green it's like kermit the frog green in a way um so it's a beautiful shade so i'm gonna figure out then because this is my first sock and now i'm starting to think did i do the sock on the other one too or the heel um so yeah, so I might have to, if I figure out the pattern, I'm fine. If I can't, I may have to claw back the um, heel and switch to a different pattern. So I don't know. <laughs> I can tell how thrilled I am by that idea. Anyway, so this is, again, this is like the first sock um, of this set. So... You know, once I get this whole thing figured out, I'm pretty much ready to turn the heel and then shape the gusset and go. And that's it's my messy cake. All of my cakes are really messy this week, and I don't know. I don't know what I did. Maybe that, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I've got to fix that, or that's just going to get, that's going to get me. Oh, I see what that is. Okay, so uh, yeah, this I wish I wish the green showed up on this because it's really quite lovely. Um, it's like a crazy bright green. It's not neon, but it's it's bright. It's Kermit. The, I'm calling it, calling it Kermit the Frog green. Uh, so that's sock number three, and sock number. Four, the last one is those are on my Knitter's Pride uh, carbon size zero as well, the 40 inch circs. And then this is the. Did I do the sock? I did the, oh, I did the heel on this one too. See, I was going right to town, I was factory lining it. So these are my lavender field socks. That's from a colorway that I did. It's not in the shop right now, but I think I'm going to be bringing it back soon. These are on my Addy Turbo size ones, I believe. Addy Turbo Rockets. I love Addy Turbo Rockets. They are my favorite. Um, so yeah, again, if I can't figure out this pattern, then I'm probably going to have to claw the sock or the heel back and possibly start over. But this is sock number two. And you know what? Yeah, this one doesn't look. See, this one is almost like, I don't know if this is going to show up very well because it's sort of a low colored yarn. But you can see possibly you can see like this is almost like ribbed and then this one is not it's like it's completely different I really I actually like how that one looks though so I don't know so now I kind of have two different heels which they're for me so whatever um, yeah, I don't know. So I don't know what's going to happen. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably, <laughs> you'll probably hear about it. Um, and again, that's kind of my messy cake. Um, my lavender field colorway. And I really like these socks. I love the, how this colorway is knitting up, but Clearly, I have done 
two socks on the magic loop. So just not doing that pattern. I don't know what pattern I was using. Maybe I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just, how do I not know? Anyway, that's the story of the socks, which seems to be a common lament on this podcast is the story of the socks. So that's not the only thing that I had issues with. Because I have issues. And as I had mentioned, yeah, long, oops, Longview Creations. This is my, I call this my summer lemonade bag. It just reminds me of lemonade. I love this bag. And in it is my first sweater, which I have decided is it's the Daydream by Heidi Kiermaier, Kiermaier. Uh, so it turned out, unfortunately, where is it in here? Not to be a daydream. Well, and again, certainly not the pattern's fault. Once again, Kelly needs to go to remedial knitting. So here's the deal. This is, <laughs> this is how much I have done. Uh, this is how much I have done right now. I had about this much done and then realized I had missed that there were supposed to be yarn overs on, because I'm doing short rows, there's supposed to be yarn overs at the end of the short row, which I couldn't figure out why. And then I still don't know why. Does anybody know why you do that? Is that for the shaping here? Like is, I don't, because I don't know, honestly, I have no idea. I think maybe if I understood what it was for, I wouldn't have had quite so many problems. I probably would have had new problems. Anyway, so, so I pulled it all out and I thought, okay, fine. I'll start again. I'm not too far in. So I did it and I started doing it and then it came out so messy. I had like where the, the yarn overs were, I guess I'm supposed to, when I reach one, I'm supposed to slip, slip knit on one side and then knit two together on the other side, which makes me think that's going to be the shaping. Um, like that you see in here, no, like sort of, yeah, like coming down from here, kind of, I'm guessing, but <laughs> I was having a hard time seeing where the yarn overs were because I think I was doing them wrong. And so I had like these gaping holes, which I'm pretty sure sure looking at the pattern was not what was intended so i did it again and then in the third attempt same thing happened and then maybe this is only the fourth cast on fourth cast on i did this far and then i decided maybe i should look at some tutorials I cannot find a tutorial for this. I can find a tutorial for, um, what do they call it? If you do like the wrap, which I think might give me the same thing. So I really, really want to work on this while I'm on vacation because I want, we booked our trip to Edinburgh. Um, Scotland. We got, I had to call the hotel and I was so enthralled with listening to the gentleman on the other end of the phone and his accent that I almost forgot what I called for. But it was so lovely and I may not come back. Um, anyway, I we're going in October so it's going to be chilly. Um, I don't know 
I'd really like to have this ready for October, <laughs> but I don't have two sweet clues what I'm doing, and I can't seem to get past here. I should do a sad face, my sad sweater face. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm gonna try the wrap and turn thing and see if that gives me the same result as the yarn over. Because every time I try to do the yarn over, it comes out so messy. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. Um, so I'm going to try it this way and, and hope that works. And if it doesn't, I'm taking it down to the Mimi at the Loop, which is my local um, yarn store. And I'm going to get her to explain it to me because she said if I had any more trouble trouble to to bring it down to her but the thing is is that I really want to figure it out myself um, or at least exhaust all my avenues until I throw my arms up and say screw it and run down to Mimi and beg her to fix me so this is the um, this is the yarn I'm using uh, Silky Wool by I think it's Elizabeth Devold. I'm trying to read it backwards here, but um, and doesn't actually have a color name. It's 175. Yeah. So it's kind of a sagey green with brown undertones, which I which I really like. Uh, and I didn't know what this was going to be like to knit with, but I got to tell you, I love knitting with this. It's just, it's wonderful. It's so wonderful that I decided, I don't know if I have it here. Um, just totally did a thing my mother does. Every time I watch this, I realize I, I may not have my mother's personality, for the most part, but I definitely have her mannerisms. It's a little freaky. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I did. I bought more of this yarn. Hang on, I'm gonna grab it. There we go. So I bought it. Ah, bought it this time in burgundy because there's another sweater that I really want to do. And do you think to left me? I can remember which one it is. <laughs> It's totally, it's totally slipping my mind. Um, and I thought I had it here, but I don't. So, I don't know. yeah, I stuck it somewhere. Anyway, that's going to be sweater number two. Maybe that's going to be, no, it's not going to be the pavement. Which one was it? I think it might have been an Isabel Kramer one, probably, because she came out with a couple of new patterns lately. And I got them both. So anyway, that's the story of the sweater. So as you can see, I've been whipping along and accomplishing nothing. But I did try to make up for it yesterday. So one thing, hang on. One thing I did was, so this is, um, sock head hat sort of I modified the pattern a little I modified it just like when I did it the last time which I think was that would have been back in the spring because I was at the writer's retreat so I love this it's like one of my favorite TV knitting things I don't like a rolled cuff on my hats. I just like the straight stocking niche, so that's what I do. I do up there. And I it's probably about two inches, maybe a little bit more. I just kind of go until I don't feel like going anymore. And then I start stocking it. Um so this will be the slouch hat and I'm knitting this in lichen and lace orchid orchid I think 
it's called orchid or is it called orchard? Orchid. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I love it. It's so pretty. And I'm not a pink person, but I really like having, I like the soft pink. That's about really the one color of pink that I like for the most part. Sometimes I see other shades and I'm like, oh yeah, let's see if I can get this. There we go. So it's got like these great pops of, it's like a red, red tones, almost like a plummy red. Um, but, and I popped this on my head now, but with the way I've been going with things, I probably knocked all the stitches off. I'm getting, I probably, I'll go this much further and then I'll start shaping the top a bit. I kind of have a small head, so. Yeah. So that's probably what I'll do. Um, but this knits up really fast and I'm probably going to cast on another one. I'm going to have more hats. I'm going to have to start doing, uh, doing some for Christmas, but it's just kind of a good mindless knit. It's a great stash buffster and I love this yarn. I have a lot, I have a lot of like in these because I love her stuff. I love it. Um, plus she's relatively local. She's in the uh, Atlanta provinces. Uh, she's over in New Brunswick. So this, I love this. Like look at the colors in this. It's just, oh, it's so pretty. I love it. I'm gonna go try it on. It's gonna go bad. It's gonna go bad in a hurry. Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Hat head. So, yes, I love these hats. Um, yeah, if you haven't made one and you're looking for some quick car knitting, on-the-go knitting, TV knitting, do it. Do it. It's a great stash buster. It takes one skein, sock yarn. I mean, you could probably modify the pattern too to whatever weight of yarn you want to use. So that was one of my whips that was not giving me any issues, which is probably why I knitted on it quite a bit. Uh, the other thing I did, and I picked this up yesterday because it had been woefully neglected for the last two weeks, is my the girl from the grocery store shawl so uh, we were watching rogue one on tv last night on netflix and the amount of ends this thing has to weave in i'm trying not to think about it i may actually do this today now let's see if i can I think I can almost get it all on the screen. <laughs> Wait. Okay. There's a lot of ends. Ignore the ends. The ends do not exist. So this is what I have done so far. And I think you can see the little stitch marker guy hanging there. So probably kind of pulling in the stitch a bit. But. All right. So from there to where the needle is, that's what I did yesterday. So, <laughs> this here is my contrasting color, and that is um, alpaca. The name of who does it drops. So that's that. Um, and I really like this yarn. It's lighter weight, or feels when I'm knitting it, lighter weight than the other part. The other one is um, Wildflowers by, again, Lichen and Lace, Bust a Mustache. Um, I love the colors in this. It's so pretty. And every time I think I've figured out what my favorite color is, I see another one and I'm like, oh no, that is. Um, but I love like the, this aqua, very light aqua blue. But then they have this other shade of green in here. Let's see if it's probably not going to show up on the camera because my camera just doesn't like green for some reason. Um, but it's sort of this here and it's like a mossy forest green in a way. But this is coming along and you know what? It's I'm enjoying it. 
I mean, I had a painful time getting it started because, you know, but oh my God, seriously, look at all the ends I have to weave in. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to be a happy day. <laughs> I should start weaving them in now. I'll weave them in like kind of just do a basic weave in. And then I'll worry about, like, when I block it, I may have to kind of adjust. But it's super squishy. I'm really looking forward to this being done because I haven't finished a shawl yet because my starting point cal. Oh, and this girl from the grocery store is um, Hohi Locatelli as well. But the starting point cal from Hohi Locatelli is languishing. And there's a part of me thinking, you know what, you're probably not going to finish that. So maybe just frog it and move on. But I don't know. I may frog it and move on. I don't know. Because there's so many shawls that I want to do. And I like that one. But I didn't use the right needle size. I got all cocky like I knew what I was doing and I went down a needle size and I just don't think it's going to have the same drape that I want it to now that I've seen what the other ones look like. So yeah, I may frog it. I don't know yet. I'll think about it. But this one is in my lumberjack, beaver lumberjack bag. From Longview Creations. Uh, she's uh, got an Etsy shop called Longview Creations uh, with lots of great bags and she has great bags. It's like really nicely, it's really gushy. So she must have some kind of, <laughs> like I know about sewing, uh, something in between. And it's kind of almost like the material here is really sturdy. Sturdy but not stiff. So that's it for whips, which, yeah, that's it for whips. So why don't we move on to some happy things, <laughs> like uh, acquisitions. So I'm somewhat acquisition light this week, this podcast. My husband and I went down to Mahone Bay, uh, which is about an hour's drive from where we're at. It's this pretty little town. Um, I used to spend about two weeks every summer down that way when I was a kid because I had a friend who lived there, or uh, she lived in Mater's Cove, which is a few minutes from Mahone Bay. So they have a yarn store there, and it's called Have a Yarn. And it's like a pilgrimage every time I go down there, of course. Actually, it's the main reason I go down there. Um, as we were leaving, uh, yesterday, my husband said, are you going to go into the yarn store that you usually go into? And I'm looking at him going, why do you think I'm going down here? <laughs> of course I am. They, uh, and there was a point to my trip is that I wanted to get some more of the Handmaiden Casbah line. I love that yarn. It's super soft. It's super you know, just squishy. Um, and the colors are always so beautiful. And I do have some in my stash, but I thought, well, I'm going down there. They usually have a really good supply. I'll see what they have and I'll maybe add to it because that's what I need. I need more yarn. So, uh, we went down and unfortunately of all the handmade yarn that they had, they were really low in the Casbah line, but that doesn't mean I didn't find some. I did find one and I know what I want to do with it. So I actually already have a, um, I already have a project in mind, sort of. I know what I'm going to do. I don't know the exact pattern. So the Casbah line is 81% Merino, 9% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. So, and again, green. It's much brighter. Like this is true, 
true Kermit the Frog green. But honestly, it is just so soft and like crazy squishy goodness. Um, so what I'm actually planning, and I don't think it has, let's get my glasses off too soon. I don't think it has, they have color wasted. Oh no, they do, moss. Yeah, I'm going to actually make myself a cow because this is actually one of my favorite colors for me. And I'm going to make myself a nice, soft, squishy cow that I can kind of, probably a long one, and then that I can wrap and flip over my head a couple, so it'll be sort of double layered. Um, so that's what's going to happen with that. And I was really, they only had, I think they only had like four skeins um, of cow's paw because they were, they were waiting for some to come in. But they had lots of other um, handmade yarns. So I did get one other, actually, so the one I, the other skein of yarn I got was a fleece artist yarn. But I'm not going to show that because I signed up for Fiber Share. And I bought that one kind of as to go in, probably, in the package. It'll depend on, you know. Who I get partnered up with, uh, what they, you know, what their likes, dislikes are. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give anything away. So the third skein that I got was also Handmaiden and it's in their Mini Maiden, which is sort of their lace. Um, it's 50% silk, 50% wool, and it is so super soft. So here's the thing. This is, and I rescanned it in the shop because it was, or I uh, rewound it in the shop because it was kind of falling apart. Um, it's got these really nice, mild colors in it. And I took one look at it and I thought, oh, I have that same skein at home. And I wanted to do a shawl, like a lacy shawl with it. So I thought, I'm going to pick up the second skein because I may want to do a large, a large wrap or shawl. And I may, so I'll probably need more than one skein. Anyways, the colorway on this is they've got HMM. But when I got home, the skein I have. Um, which has probably more of this in it than the other skein, but otherwise is completely identical. And it says MM. So I don't know if that's the skein, like if that's the colorway code. So, and I don't really know what the difference between the MM and the HMM is other than one has like more of this in it. So, but they're enough alike that I'm okay with it. I don't have the shell pattern yet that I'm going to do these with, but they are, oh my God, I can't believe how soft they are. It's like, I don't want to let them go. Uh, but I also picked up, um, some Addy Turbos. I was looking Sorry. for the Addy Turbo Rockets, but they didn't have any in the size that I wanted, but they did have the Addy uh, Turbo Lace. So I wanted um, a three millimeter, and this is a 32 inch surf, which will be perfect for when I'm doing these. But we took, I took it out of the package and she said, you know, a lot of people like these because they have the really sharp points. Oh, let's see if I can actually get that to. But the other thing I like is that they have a little more traction, which I think for lace knitting, I may like a little better, but I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So I haven't picked out a pattern. So if anybody has any suggestions, um, you know, don't, nothing, 
nothing that's going to challenge my skills too much. Because <laughs> clearly, I feel I've been challenged enough lately. So that is it. That's it for acquisitions for me. I kept it pretty light this time. Oh, actually, sorry. This was my fiber for the people uh, skein that I had ordered a couple weeks ago, but it hadn't come in yet. So this is, I love this one, and the colorway is seagrass. And this is her 100% merino uh, downy sock, which I think might be a new base for her. But it's got great speckling. Um, along here and all that. So that's uh, Fiber for the People. That's Taylor from Wool Needles Hands. That's her shop and uh, she's got lots of great stuff in there. So mm, it smells good too. So I do, I did get that. So that came in and that's it. So what's in the queue? So here's the thing. It's August, which means I have, what is it going to be? I have about four and a half months to get my Christmas knitting done. I have not started any of my Christmas knitting yet. One of the things, potentially two, because I may do something for my mom too, is going to be a bigger project. And then the other ones are going to be kind of smaller projects like socks or whatever. But I've got to get on the stick with that because I also have my own. I want to get my sweater. I would like to get two sweaters done. <laughs> but I have to get through this first one. I'll get through the first one and then I'll decide, you know, what's going to happen with the second one, how fast I can get that done. I think once I get one sweater done and I kind of understand the process in my head, the second one will go much quicker. In theory, I'll probably run into a whole new set of problems, but anyway, <laughs> um, so I do have to make a list of what I need to make, and I'm going to stash dive for all of it. Yeah, yeah. so I definitely want to get started on that stuff. So a lot of what I do between now and the end of the year, I'm gonna say about 65% of my knitting may be Christmas knitting. Oh yeah, it's just a matter of getting started, getting the sock issue ironed out, and getting my shit together and getting it done. So that's that. Uh, and that's for what's in the queue. So to die for, um, <laughs> bring it tumbling down. Uh, I haven't done any dyeing in the past few weeks just because I was working more on doing some promo and just kind of getting the word out about the shop, that kind of goodness. Um, but I am so itchy to be dying that I've decided tomorrow I'm going to do a little. I want to do some uh, test skeins because autumn is coming and Christmas is coming. So um, I need to get going on the fall update. So I am going to be doing um, a bit of a significant sale on the shop and it's just going to be, uh, it's going to be a short sale. Uh, it's going to be for um, the week of the 12th, just the 12th to the 14th. So basically it's going to be 25% off uh, all orders over $40. Um, and also I've adjusted the shipping fees a little bit. I'm going to try a bit of a flat rate. I'm trying to make it um, a little more economical. Okay, autumn is coming, Christmas is coming, and I need to get on the stick 
with getting out new colorways and I've got some ideas in my mind that I want to try and see how they translate into the yarn because I so I'm gonna do a few tester knits tomorrow I'm also gonna dye up some more spring explosion I've got this really pretty gift bag that a friend gave me a few years ago and I'm looking at it thinking oh my god that would make a beautiful skein of yarn and I think I have all the colors I need. I'm so going to try that. I'll let you know how it turns out. So I'm going to do a shop update uh, with the fall and starting with the Christmas uh, colors. And I'm hoping to have that ready by the end of August. So I will have a better idea of the date um, for the update on my next podcast because by then I'll have return from vacation and I'll have an idea of how much time I'm going to have and how much I can get done by then. So it's going to be either the end of August, first week of September. I think that's everything on the to die for front, but there's plenty over there um, right now. So go check it out and uh, watch for the sale on August 12th. Uh, it's only going to run for a few days. So, um, so get it while the getting's good. And then the fall update will happen end of August, very early September. And that's it for To Die For. So, weird story. My father-in-law bought a house not too far from here, which he's referring to as the summer home. Um, for us to use, and him as well, obviously. Um, and it's right on the harbor, so it's like right, like, backyard goes right into the water. Um, and it's really pretty, but the people who lived there before, uh, probably hadn't painted it in a while, and a lot of the paint colors, I was like, mm -hmm. Um, but everything kind of needed, like, a complete redo because it hadn't been painted in a while so it was getting a little run down looking in that sense. So I've been put in charge of interior design which is good because that's my jam and uh, so my husband went to the paint store and just uh, picked up like this whole I mean seriously look at this thing and I'm to pick out the colors on this which is fine because I already have in mind the main color for the downstairs and all of that stuff. But here's the weird story. So my husband goes to the Sherman Williams paint store, which is like, I don't know, two minutes from our house. And he, just to see if he can pick up a sample thing so I can kind of get started on picking up the colors. So he's there and he's talking to the girl behind the counter who's getting this for him and he just happens to mention gray houses and she said, did you, you know, she says, where is it? And he, so he told her and she said, 47, number 47? And he's like, yeah, do you know the people that live there? And she goes, yeah, it was me. So. That was like totally randomly bizarre. That belongs in the totally random section. Like what are the chances? So here's the other weird part. When I redid our bedroom about, I don't know, six months ago and I was picking out the paint and I had a chip that I was trying to get them to match, I took it to Sherman Williams and I'm positive it was the same girl that did the, the color for me, the color match for me and got me my paint. And who knew that like six months later, we'd be, you know, owning our house. It was just randomly bizarre. My husband's still a little freaked out. One of the things I need to do is also pick out the color for this room because I really want to get this painted and the floor redone. And the floor is going to be kind of a hardwood or laminate. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put in a laminate floor and the laminate floor is gonna have a bit of a gray base to it. I need to pick out a color for the walls and I think I'm gonna go with a white. 
it's like six million shades of white. And I'm looking at it going, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm there's apparently whites that have the brown, kind of the more brownish tones. And then there's the one that have the more blue tones. And then there's the ones that have like gray tones. I'll pick the one with the gray undertone because the floor is going to be gray. <sighs> but I got to get on that because I really want to get it done for when we get back. I'd like to get it started when we get back from vacation and before we leave for Edinburgh. We are going away um, shortly to PEI, which we usually do every summer. And then we're going to be there for a week. And so we have a cottage that we rent there for a week, which is really nice. Usually I don't look forward to it, um, mostly because whenever we go, I've been under um, a really tight book deadline. So... I spend the whole vacation writing, which, you know, and then when I'm not writing, I'm kind of brain fried from all the writing I was doing. So I haven't really been able to kind of relax and enjoy the fact that I have a week at the beach. And I'm not a big beach person. I don't go lay out at the beach, I get really bored. Um, and also it gets stinking hot because there's no shelter and we don't have like one of those little cabana things or umbrellas or whatever. So I much prefer to kind of stay on the deck um, at the cottage, which is sheltered. It's got shade and it's got sun, so I can choose. Um, but Again, when I've been writing, it hasn't exactly been restful. It's been kind of stressful because I've been trying to make, you know, page count and the deadline looming over my head, blah, blah, blah. So for this time, I have actually booked the week off from writing. I do have a book deadline, um, which is in November, November, I think which is okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically take books to read and stuff to knit and I'll take my writing with me and if I feel like writing I can and if I don't feel like writing it's not going to matter. So that's the plan. But that's about it. To other returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. For the new viewers, I hope you enjoyed the podcast and will return. Hit the subscribe button if you want to know when the next episode is up and give the episode a thumbs up if you liked it. That helps me get the word out. Also, um, the next episode may be a couple days late because I think we get back from vacation on the day that I normally podcast. So I may need a couple extra days to kind of get that done and edited and up. But it will be coming, so hit the subscribe button and you'll know when that's there. And until then, I hope everybody is having a great summer. I hope you're getting to spend some time in the sunshine and enjoy yourself and get some time off from the regular work schedules and school schedules. And until next time, happy knitting, and I'll see you back here soon. See you later.